over uh, rather day six of the murder trial of a Santa Cruz County rancher accused of killing an undocumented migrant on his property. And our chief investigative reporter, Chorus Islander, has been covering the case since day one. Chorus, you were inside the courtroom all day today and you joined us live outside the Santa Cruz County Courthouse. What's the very latest on this? Yo, know, Monica, another busy day here in court today. The jury heard from four witnesses, each who played an important role in investigating this case. Walking into court today, George Allen Kelly, after a holiday weekend, seemed very confident with his defense so far. Take a listen. Uh, how are you feeling about entering the second full week of this uh, trial? I'm feeling good. You feel strong about uh, your defense so far? Yes, I do. Thank you, sir. Anything uh, you'd like to say to the public? No. Thanks for all the support. The day began with testimony from two Santa Cruz County deputies who uh, were some of the first on the scenes at different points of this investigation. But most of today was spent on the medical examiner, Dr. Krista Tim, who examined the body of the victim, Gabriel Butemea. She walked through the single gunshot wound and its characteristics using a fake skeleton that was brought in by the defense. She demonstrated how the bullet entered the body from a very low angle in the back torso and exited near uh, his sternum on his front side at a higher angle, explaining why and how the bullet would take such a path was a big focus of the defense's line of questioning. Dr. Tim was not able to say exactly what weapon would have caused it or exactly how the victim was positioned at the time of impact or how the shooter would have been positioned at the time of impact. The time of death, she says, was pronounced at 624 that day, but that's just when the body was found and able to be pronounced dead. It is far from a precise calculation of the exact moment that he actually would have been shot and killed. The defense honed in on that fact and the fact that many things could not be concretely determined. And we can see it now with this rod in there that it starts low and goes high. That we do know, correct? Yes. And so all the possibilities that could be out there, we just don't know how this happened, right? I do not. Right. The defense also questioned the ability uh, for the victim to keep walking or moving after being shot. Dr. Tim testified that it likely would still have been a possibility, at least for some time. The final witness called today was a forensic scientist from an independent company that the county asked to analyze gunshot residue from article of the victim's clothing. She testified that there was no residue found that could indicate the shot didn't come from close range, but the defense poked holes in the theory by bringing up a backpack that the victim uh, they say it was wearing, which was not sent off for testing. The witness testified that the backpack could have impacted the lack of the gunshot residue found on the clothing. The distance of where the shots came from and by what type of weapon are all very important pieces of the defense's case. The testimony today did not really give a very concrete answer to those questions at this point, but still a lot more testimony and a lot more evidence left to come in this trial. It's a long one, expected to last three weeks. Things will pick back up here tomorrow morning at 8.30. We'll, we'll be here and bring you the very latest. We're live from the gallows tonight. Chorus Nylander, News 4 Tucson.